maburu haya Mana niwe tunestahili sifa zote Ni wewe tunestahili kuabuliwa Bwana niwe tunestahili kupewa sifa zote Maburu yote ni yako Jehova Asubuhi ya leo tunakuabudu Asubuhi ya leo tunakuheshimu wewe Asubuhi ya leo bwana tunakuabudu wewe Wewe uliye mtakatifu wa watakatifu Wewe uliye mtegemeo letu na msaada wetu wa karibu Baba wewe peke yako unastahili Hakuna kama wewe Mungu mtakatifu Hakuna wa kulinganishwa na wewe baba yetu Hakuna wa kufananishwa na wewe uliye juu sana Wewe uliye na uweza kuliko wakuu wote Baba tunakuabudu asubuhi ya leo Wewe uliye juu ya vyote Mungu tunaliabudu jina lako Wewe ambaye unatawala juu ya vyote Mungu tunaliheshimu jina lako Bwana pokea sifa na utukufu asubuhi ya leo Wewe umetuleta nyumbani mwako ukiwa na lengo na kusudi Jehova Mungu asubuhi ya leo Tusaidi ya kutenda aliyo mapenzi yako Bwana wewe ambaye ndiwe tu unayefurahishwa na wale walio watakatifu tusaidie kufanya kulingana na mapenzi yako baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo Asubuhi leo ningependa tuwekewe neno katika kitabu cha mambo ya Walawi 20 na mstari wa 26 Mambo ya Walawi 20 na mstari wake wa 26 kwa lugha ya Kiswahili tafadhali. Mambo ya Walawi 20 and verse 
anataka nasi tukayo maisha ya utakatifu ili tuweze kumjua zaidi lazima wapendwa tuwe watakatifu ili tuweze kupenda katika uweze kumjua Mungu zaidi uweze kuingia katika kina cha kumjua zaidi lazima utembee katika utakatifu Bwana Yesu asifiwe Na asubuhi ya leo ningependa tuliwe tamanio lako na iwe ni ombi la moyo wako kwamba Bwana Mungu nisaidie kutembea katika utakatifu Maana pasipo utakatifu wa pendo hakuna kumuona Mungu Kama hautakaa katika maisha ya utakatifu you be struggle hata katika kumtafuta Mungu you will never experience the move of the holy spirit if you are not home wapendwa ni wakati bibili inasema ya kwamba Mungu atarejesha utukufu wake ule ulio kuwa nyakati zile za mtume katika kanisa la mwisho na utakuwa mkuu kuliko ule walile kwanza lakini wapendwa sisi ambao tutakao beba ule utukufu pasipo utakatifu hatuwezi tukaweza kutembea katika ule utukufu wa Bwana tunahitaji utakatifu ili tukaweze kumjua Mungu zaidi na ili kwamba ukaweze karibia Mungu lazima njia zako na na yeye zikawe zinaelekea kwa njia inayofaa. Wapendwa asubuhi ya leo ningependa tu waambie Mungu nisaidie kutembea maisha ya utakatifu. Odiikune uogai ehi dali. Pasipo utakatifu hauwezi kutembea Mungu hauwezi tembea katika roho maana hata roho ni mtakatifu anataka ukae katika huo mtakatifu ili muweze kutembea pamoja roho wa Mungu atakuacha tu kama wewe sio mtakatifu hata kuondokea na utakuwa ndani unatembea katika utakatifu lakini roho aliondoka kitambo sababu nishajichanganya ambia Mungu asubuhi ya leo Baba nisaidie tu kutembea katika utakatifu. Ili kwa baba nikakupendeze, nisaidie kutembea katika utakatifu. Ombea roho yako, ombea wokovu wako asubuhi ya leo. Usitaje hitaji lako lingine. Ambia tu Mungu, haya yote mengine ni ya kubaki hapa ulimwenguni. Lakini ukiwa na utakatifu utaweza Baba asubuhi ya leo katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Unasema wewe Mungu we ni mtakatifu. Na hivyo basi Bwana unataka tutembee katika huu utakatifu wako. Negedha gai tukokeni, negedha gai tuboshi the great one yako. We can only reflect the glory of the Lord unless we are holy. Tusaidie 
bwana kuwa na hofu yako bwana katika mioyo yetu mungu tongea na wewe tige na gai tongea na wewe tige na wewe kigai tongea na wako mada matuko maya tori gai reba hoshe kantara baba ya kuna Baba tu saidi ya kutembea katika utakatifu Tusionekane sisi bali wewe uonekane ndani yetu Katika hali zetu shughuli zetu za kila siku Baba tu saidi ya tusionekane sisi Mbali wewe uonekane ndani yetu Help us Lord to reflect your glory Wherever we go In whatever we do Lord Help us Lord to reflect your glory Because we are the mirror Oh Rabba Shandari Babo Ma 
maisha yangu mimi katika maisha yangu naomba wewe Yesu uonekane wewe uinuliwe kila siku baba niondokapo bwana naomba wewe uonekane maisha ni mwanzo mimi nisionekane bali wewe Yesu uonekane katika jina la Yesu Kristo naomba wewe Mungu kaonekane katika maisha yangu
Ambia bwana unamhitaji Ambia Mungu tamani ola moyo wako Nilisema kwamba siku ya leo usiombe mahitaji yako Ombea ushirika wako na Mungu wako Ushirika wako na muumba wako Huyo aliyekuita huyo aliyekuchagua Anasema hata kabla hujaumbika katika tumbo la mama yako alikujua na akakuchagua wewe na ndio maana hata siku ya leo amekupa nafasi kama hii Ombea roho yako ombea uhusiano wako na yeye Gota nero yako nawe gai
ataweza kukufunulia yale baba aliyo nayo kwa ajili yako asubuhi ya leo Taka ushirika na wewe Ewe roho mimi nataka ushirika na wewe Roho mimi nataka ushirika na wewe Ewe roho mimi nataka ushirika na wewe Roho nataka mimi nataka ushirika na wewe Ewe roho Nataka ushirika na we Roho nataka Mimi nataka ushirika na we Ewe roho Mimi nataka ushirika na we Roho nataka Mimi nataka ushirika na we Ewe roho Mimi nataka ushirika na we
Tena mshauri wetu Wewe kidoleta mungu Nataka ushirika na we Mimi nataka ushirika na we Ewe lo Mimi nataka ushirika na we Lo Mimi nataka ushirika na we Nataka ushirika na wewe Lo Tupate na fasi bere zake bwana tunapo muambia Ya kwamba tungehitaji Ya kwamba tukawe na ushirika na yeye Yeye abaye ni tumaini letu Yeye abaye hututia nguvu na utupa uweza Wakuyatenda abao ni mapenzi ya bwana Tuenende bere zake bwana tunapo mshukuru Tunapo muambia roho wa mungu akaweze kunena na mioyo yetu tuambie roho mtakatifu akatutembelee kila mmoja wetu anapotupatia nguvu mpya katika maisha yetu ili tukaweze kumtumikia vyema zaidi katika jina la Yesu father we worship you we give you praises our father and our god that you are given us an opportunity to come into this house that is called by your holy name how we pray that almighty god you may help us through the power of the Holy Spirit that we may be able to worship you in truth and also in the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Help us, dear Lord, to be attentive to you. Help us to be sensitive to you, Holy Spirit of the living God, that we may hear your word, that we may walk in obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. This is our prayer this morning, that you may help us to open our heart and our spirit, O oh God, that we may be able to hear from you. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have prepared a table for us this morning. And Lord God Almighty, you have prepared a word for each one of us, everlasting Father. Lord Jesus, as we sit at your feet, we pray that you may speak to us, our God. Holy Spirit of the living God, we pray that you may divide the word of God to each one of us, everlasting Father, in a way that Jehovah God, you meet us at the very point of our needs, everlasting Father. As your servant stands before you and before this of your people, dear Lord, I pray that you are going to use it in a very, very special way. And your people will hear your voice. And God, you help us to be sensitive to your counsel, to your instructions, oh God. And you help us to be careful to obey. We bless your holy name, dear Lord, even as we receive your word with thanksgiving. For this we pray and trust in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. You had a good morning. I want to welcome you in the presence of God this morning. Feel at the feet of Jesus. Feel as you are expecting from the Lord, and the Lord will not disappoint you. Let's put our hands together as we welcome the servant of God, Bishop, to bring us the word of God. Thank you so much, praise and worship team, for leading us in such a way. God bless you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a great joy to be able to start before you and to be able to see you. Thank you so much. And congratulations for coming to church today. Those who are following us online, we also recognize that you did well to tune in to hear the word of God together with us. The word of God in the book of John, chapter number 21, that is where we are going to share the word of God. John chapter number 21. John chapter number 21. John chapter number uh, 21. This is the last, the last chapter of the book of John. And we are glad this is after it happens after the resurrection. That is after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus, after his resurrection, Jesus Christ had uh, stayed here on earth for 40 days. And for 40 days, he continued to teach his disciples. 
he continued to meet with them, he continued to teach them and to prepare them to become more effective leaders and to take the mantle of leadership. In chapter number 21, after the Bible records, let's read together all of us in English. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his Excuse me. Let's read together once again. Let's continue reading. Are you there? Let's read together. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others, disciples were together. And they... And I, Let's read first number three once again. I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them. And they say, we will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Last night in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But his disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Let's read that first again. Media, you are Kenny Vizuri. What to our Vizuri? You are Vizuri. He said, throw your net on the light side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he loved his outer garment, allowed him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards when they Jesus said to them bring some of the fish you have just caught It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus came, took the blood and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the that time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Let's read verse number 15. Verse number 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, 
See, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, sign of Jonah, do you love me more than this? He said to him, feed my lambs. Verse number 16. Do you truly love me? He answered, yes. Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus, take care of my sheep. Jesus, say, Jesus asked him again. Let's read verse number 17. He said to him the third time. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? You may be seated. This is a wonderful text that we have read. I've already told you that what we see here happened after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a message for each one of you. Our message for each one of you, very important message for all of us. The title of our message today is A Call. A Call to Renew Our Commitment to Jesus Christ. It is a call. It is a call to renew our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle John wrote the book of John with an intention to make people believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who was indeed sent by God to come and die for our iniquities. His intention is to stimulate or inspire belief in his readers that Jesus Christ is indeed God. John is a great storyteller And his gospel with a wonderful story. It is a story of resolution. A story of resolution. The resolution of the call of Peter a restoration a restoration that God in Jesus Christ demonstrates. It is here that all ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, all believers, all servants of God, whether they be pastors, evangelists, ushers, musicians, music, and worship team, praise and worship team, 
instrumentalists, choir members, hope bearers, whatever they may call themselves, whether they are church leaders, whether they are intercessors, all church ministers need to fall into the arms of Jesus Christ again and renew commitment. All of us can testify over time When you felt like you are wavering in your experience, in your commitment, in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us need to come to a time where we can be able to hear the call. That call to renew our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we talk about renewing our commitment, we are talking about returning back returning back to the original experience to the first experience of our walk with God T returning back to our zeal Reviving our zeal, reviving our passion, reviving our enthusiasm, our enthusiasm, our passion, our desire, our zeal to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and obey Him. portion of scripture is a wonderful scripture that tells us of the fact that Jesus Christ truly loves us and reaches to us, particularly when we fail. There are times when we feel ourselves a failure. Have you ever gotten yourself to such a, a time when you experienced that sense of failure? When you felt that you are truly a failure. When you felt that you had failed, you had failed your master. Have you ever experienced that? In this portion of scripture, John demonstrates that the Lord Jesus Christ provides a save a safe place opportunity for us for restoration to renew our commitment to renew our call to renew our zeal to renew our passion to renew our enthusiasm 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible records very clearly if you, are, if you look at verse number 3. Look at verse number 3. The Bible tells us that some of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ were together. A few of them, Simon Peter, Thomas, who was called twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the two sons of Zebedee, that is James and John, and two others of the disciples of Jesus Christ whose names are not recorded here. They were there, they were together. But remember, this was after the resurrection of Jesus. Indeed, Jesus Christ had already appeared to them they knew that the Lord Jesus Christ had listened from the dead. But that knowledge of uh, the resurrected Savior had not changed them much. If they had not changed their perspective much, they were still thinking about the ordinary life here on earth. How do we know that? The Apostle Luke tells us that in the book of Acts chapter number 1, in Acts chapter number 1, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, during his 40 days, 40 days with the, with the disciples, he continued teaching them matters of the kingdom. He continued teaching them matters of the kingdom. And as he, he taught them matters of the kingdom, what did they ask him? They asked Jesus, when will the Father restore back the kingdom to the Jews. They were still thinking as ordinary human beings. Thinking about the, the possessions of power, possessions of power in the kingdom. Thinking about life here on earth. And they were limited in their thinking. In that, we see Peter even after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we see something about Peter. The focus is so much not on the other disciples in, in, in John chapter number 21. In John chapter number 21, the text that we learned, it is not so much, the focus is not so much on the other disciples, but the focus is so much on Peter. You all know what Peter had done. Peter, before Jesus Christ was crucified, Peter had made a commitment to Jesus and had told Jesus, I am ready to go with you to the cross. I am ready to be crucified with you. I will not leave you. I am ready to go with you. And Jesus Christ told, told him, Peter, you think you can do it with your own strength? Will you really follow me to the cross? Jesus Christ, being called with all the ability to know everything, 
Jesus Christ told Peter, you will deny me three times before a cock cross. Before a cock cross, you will have denied me three times. And it so happened that Peter denied Jesus three times and then hand the sound of the claw of a cock and Peter was so guilty Peter was so sorrowful in this state in a, where we have read the text that we have read in the book of John we see the restoration of Peter the focus is so much on restoration of Peter, not condemnation of Peter. There are important words that I want us to focus on as I share this text with you. One is an important word, refraction. Refraction. This is important if we are to renew our, our commitment, because we are talking about renewing our commitment to Jesus Christ, whether it is the commitment to follow him as a disciple or the commitment to serve him in whatever capacity as a believer, as a disciple and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, if we are to renew our commitment and walk with Jesus Christ, maintaining our commitment to him, first of all, the commitment to be a child of God, to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to have what we call refraction. Refraction. This was a moment it was a time of refraction. First and foremost, Fraction, we see something about failure. Failure is real. Failure is real. And one important thing that we need to understand is that we all experience moments of failure. If you are seated next to somebody, look at that person. Look at that person. We all experience moments of failure. Failure is inevitable. Failure is inevitable. We all experience it. We are, we are all disposed to failure. We are exposed to it. We are all vulnerable. We are all vulnerable. All of us. All human beings experience moments of failure. And life here on earth has got those moments. Moments when you feel, I have failed. Sometimes it is failure to, uh, to achieve our goals, the, the goals that we set. We are in the second quarter. We are in the second quarter of the year, 2024. 
this being the month of April. When you look back and you consider the resolutions that you made at the beginning of the year, when you assess them and you assess yourself, possibly you can tell of some failure that you have recorded. We are all exposed to failure. Sometimes we fail. We fail as parents. You look at your life as a parent. And you feel that sense of failure. We fail as husbands. There are times I look at my life and I see some sense of failure as a husband. You fail as a wife. You fail as a father. You fail as a mother. You fail as an employee. As a worker, you fail as a businessman, as a businesswoman. There are times you look at your life and you see some sense of failure. You fail as a student. We fail in our engagement. Worse, we fail, we fail as disciples of Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ. There are times we look at our lives against the Holy Scriptures, against the standard of the standard that is set in the Bible, and you see you have failed. What does failure do to us? A sense of failure. A sense of failure, most of the times, comes with the guilt. Failure comes with guilt. Failure comes with a sense of guilt. And guilt is dangerous. Guilt is dangerous because if it is not dealt with, if you do not deal with the guilt, it can drive you away from God. It can drive you away from fellowship with God. Psalm chapter number 32. In Psalm chapter number 32, David begins by saying, Blessed is the person whose sin is, whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is Covered. The person whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, is a blessed person. Blessed is that person whose God cannot hold guilty or responsible for the sin. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, in whose spirit there is no hypocrisy, there is no insincerity, there is no deceit. That person is a blessed person. But David then expresses his state. Look at verse number three. David is telling about his state. What does he say? Be together with me. He is saying, when I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groanings all the day long. He saying, guilt drove me into that feeling of e 
inability even physically I was groaning all my day long why was he groaning he was groaning because he had committed sin and he was feeling a sense of guilt because of it and guilt was driving him away from God and as long as sin is not confessed as long as sin has not been confessed as long as sin is there it drives us away from God it brings a sense of guilt if you look at first number four David, David is a, a, a saying day and night your hand was so heavy upon me and he said my vitality was turned into the drought of, of summer and then he says slow down and think about this the word seller that's what it means I don't know whether you, you, have, you, you, you have ever thought the meaning of that word is a powerful word seller it means slow down pause it means pause and think about it don't just go continue reading slow down and think about it sin is dangerous because sin brings guilt and when you fail guilt comes failure comes with a sense of guilt and guilt can drive you can take away your vitality it can take zeal away from you it can rob you of the passion it can rob you of the zeal uh, guilt can rob you of the zeal of your efforts it robs us of the power we become powerless in the presence of guilt dangerous so failure one problem of failure is that it comes with guilt it brings guilt something else that failure brings is that failure brings a sense of shame it brings a sense of shame it comes with a sense of shame so what happens is that because of shame because of that sense of shame we are unwilling to seek help I will become ashamed to seek help even where we should be able to seek help you become ashamed because failure comes with that sense of shame what else does failure do a that thing that failure does is that it brings disappointment frustration and discouragement failure comes with a sense of disappointment frustration and discouragement and discouragement is normally a tool that the devil uses is a gun that the devil uses to shoot people down if it, it is not dealt with discouragement discouragement can bring weariness it can cause you to give up so the discourage the, the, the failure leads to a sense of weariness it leads to a sense of weariness weariness a sense of giving up growing weary becoming weary that i don't want to continue there is no meaning in life no reason for continuing so this is where ladies and gentlemen this is where peter was i take you back to john chapter number 21 verse number three in john chapter number 21 verse number three peter looks at the fellow disciples and he tells them i'm going fishing i go fishing <laughs> what 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 is he saying what is he saying simon 
Peter said to them, I am going fishing. You know, for, for Peter, fishing was not just a hobby. Fishing was a trade for him. Fishing was a livelihood. Live fishing was a livelihood for Peter before he was called to follow Jesus. So when he said, I am going fishing, he is not saying I'm just going for a, for a hobby to excite myself for a, for a while. No, what he is saying is that I am going back to my former business. My former business. So, <laughs> that is rooted. I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. It's a very rooted, very rooted statement. I'm going fishing. In other words, Peter, what is Peter saying? Peter is saying, I don't find any reason for following this man, Jesus, although he has risen from the dead and he is alive again. I, I, I have nothing to do with that business of following him, following him anymore. It's a sense of giving up. It's a sense of discouragement. Discouragement. A sense of discouragement. A sense of giving up. Why did Peter give up? Because of failure. Peter was so much guilty about denying Jesus. Why couldn't I follow my master? Why couldn't I keep my word? following Jesus to the cross. I had made a vow, I had made a commitment that I will follow you to the cross. I am ready, he said, I am ready to be crucified with you. Why couldn't I follow him? Why couldn't I keep my word? Why didn't I keep my word? Why? So kind of Peter was beating himself too hard. Peter was beating himself too hard. Too hard and pushing himself to the wall. Too hard. You know sometimes when we fail, we, don't, we do not treat ourselves fairly. Sometimes we beat ourselves too hard. Most of the times we do not think about the Savior who is near to us to restore us. I'm going fishing. What was the, the response of, uh, of the rest of the disciples who are there with Jesus? They said, what did they say? We are going with you also. It's like being discouraged and you are speaking to people who are already discouraged. Remember, in the company of Jesus was James. In the, comp uh, sorry, in the company of, P of Simon was James. In the company of Simon was John, the sons of Dada. Jesus in your kingdom allow that one of us be on your left and the other be on your right remember we are your cousins remember we are your cousins when you establish your kingdom when you establish your kingdom allow us one of us be on your right and the other be on your left. Possibly one was eyeing that position of the deputy president and the other one possibly was 
I in that, that position of the prime secretary, the prime minister in our kingdom. But Jesus Christ gave them a soft rebuke about that. It's not a matter of possessions and titles. Jesus had not come to establish another kingdom. Diffraction. They went out immediately. They got into the boat. And that night, they caught nothing. I like that. That night, they caught nothing. John is saying something very vital. And we are going to draw some, some vital lessons from that. But before, remember that this is a time for refraction for Peter. Jesus appears, Jesus appears, and when Jesus appears, he appears to the disciples who are already discouraged. Remember he had already appeared to them after his election. But they could not even really recognize him. When he, 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 he appeared that morning and they had toiled the whole night. They had toiled the whole night. And remember, these were experienced fishermen. Peter was an experienced fisherman. John was an experienced fisherman. James was an experienced fisherman. But with all the experience they had, with all the experience they had, they didn't, the whole night they caught nothing. So Jesus appears. He greets them. Hi guys. Good morning. How is your experience? Do you have, have you caught some fish? Do you have some fish for breakfast? And in discouragement, in discouragement, they, they, they responded and they told him, we have labored the whole night but we call nothing. We labored a whole night. We call nothing. And Jesus Christ gave them instructions. He told them where to throw their nets. They said, yes, we labored the whole night. But at to a wall, we are going to try again. We are going to try again. Refraction. We are dealing with refraction. Still, with what Jesus Christ did, he appeared, Jesus Christ had a purpose. And the purpose was restoration. First and foremost, the restoration of Peter. So that Peter may be able to come out of the pain of failure. So that he may be able to come out of failure. Diffraction is the beginning of renewal. In other words, we need, all need times of rest. We all need times of renewal. We all need time to ask ourselves and even ask God, Lord, 
What do you intend to do in my life? What do you intend to do in my ministry? What is, what is your direction? What is your purpose? What is your direction? I want to know it. What is your desire? What is your will? Concerning my life, concerning my ministry. Allow me, Heavenly Father, to, uh, to be aware of my calling. I want to understand it. I want to know it. I want to know the purpose of my life. Jesus is taking Peter through an, a very important process. A very important process in renewal of commitment. And that is the process of recognition. Apart from refraction, Peter needed to go through a process of acknowledging, recognizing, recognizing his failure recognizing where he was and recognizing that he needed Jesus Christ recognizing what that he needed Jesus Christ recognizing also his potential as much as he needed to recognize his inability he needed also to recognize his potential Peter is also taken through a process of the assessment which is very vital for us to experience renewal renewal of our commitment to god we need to go through the process of reflection we need to go through the process of recognition we need to go through the process through the process of the assessment we need to assess ourselves self-examination and we need to do it we examine ourselves our standing with God we need to examine it we examine it we need to, to, to have the ability to, to unlearn and as well as the learn when we go through assessment that sale of assessment we are able to know areas in our lives where we need to unlearn what we need to unlearn what we need to relearn in the life of peter there are several things that he needed to do one he needed to admit his failure he also needed to admit that without the power of God, he, could, he couldn't go far. Because over the years, he had trusted himself. And he was trusting his power. So, so much. In this, there are a few lessons I want to mention and then we wind up. A few lessons that we can be able to draw from this portion of scripture. A few lessons. Lesson number one that we need to draw from this portion of scripture. Is that. The love of God in our lives is constant and consistent even when we fail. When you fail, you need to remember that the love of God is consistent, is constant, that God loves you. And you need to hear the voice of Christ calling you back to the relationship with him. So Jesus appears to Peter. 
he asked Peter after the that huge catch of fish a hundred and fifty three of them huge one big ones and Peter is there Jesus asked Peter do you love me Simon Simon son of Jonas do you love me more than this do you love me more than this <laughs> you know <laughs> I told you that the New Testament was first of all written in Greek language the first the word for love that Jesus Christ uses there the first time he asks Jesus uh, he asked Peter do you love me more than this he asks him he he uses the word agape or agapao agapao in, uh, in other words Jesus ask, uh, uh, is asking Peter do you agapao me in other words do you agapao me do you love me unconditionally do you love me sacrificially do you know how Peter responded to that when, G when Jesus asked, asked him the first time do you love me more than this Peter responded by saying yes I phileo you I phileo you in other words Peter will say I love you as a friend I love you as a friend not that unconditional love the agape the agapo the agape I phileo you I love you as a friend a second time Jesus asked Peter Peter Simon Peter Simon Peter son of Jonas do you agape me and again Peter says yes I phileo you this is very important at that time Jesus asked Peter he changes the word and he asked Peter Simon Peter do you even can you see that the that time look at that and I would like you to take care of this as you go through that is that portion of scripture Je Jesus asked Peter at that time and uh, that time Peter get annoyed the Bible says that Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him do you even phileo me that was it penetrated into his heart do you even uh, love me as a friend as a friend who do, do, do you love me and Peter can remember wow I really didn't stand with him as a friend I had promised to go with him to the cross do you even feel me and Peter is hot the word penetrates into his heart because Jesus want to restore him so Jesus tells him if you love me feed my lambs take care of my lambs Jesus was giving Peter a responsibility a responsibility this was a great time it was a great moment of restoring Peter so that Peter may become one of the chief leaders of the church 
This is the man who stood on the day of Pentecost when the 120 were filled with the Holy Spirit and people were saying, all oh, these guys, all oh, these people are a drunk. They are drunk. They have taken alcohol. Peter stood up and he told them, we do not want you to fail to understand. It is so early. Paying nine in the morning. Paying nine o'clock in the morning. What has happened is the fulfillment of the promise that the Father gave through Prophet Joel. That in the last day I will release my spirit upon our flesh. We see him as a courageous person. But we thank Jesus that he restored him. That was a time of restoration and a time of commitment. Another important lesson that we learn, apart from the fact that the love of God is consistent and constant even when we are failed. Number two, we learn that without Jesus, we are unable to do anything. Without Jesus, we are powerless. Without Jesus, we are powerless. Tell your neighbor, without Jesus, we are powerless. Without Jesus, we are unable. Without Jesus, apart from Jesus, without Jesus, we are unable, we are powerless. We cannot depend on our power. Even when we engage with our life, we need to remember as Jesus Christ told his disciples, without me, you, you can do nothing. John 15, verse number 5. Jesus told his disciples, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. These disciples need to understand, they needed to understand that. They are empty nests. They are empty nets. They are empty nets. Served to remind them that they were powerless. They were unable, they were weak, apart from the help of Jesus, apart from the support of Jesus. They needed to understand. They labored the whole night. And that was a lesson. Without Jesus, we are powerless. Without Jesus, we are incapable. Without Jesus, we are unable. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. All our efforts can add up to nothing. All our strategies can add up to nothing. All our wisdom can add up to nothing. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. We are all dependent on him. Without him, we can do nothing. We need his wisdom. We need his wisdom. We need his grace. We need his power. Jesus enables us to discern the way. From this scripture, we also learn that Jesus enables us to discern the way. He is the one who told them where to throw the nets. He enables us to discern the way. With him we can discern the way. With him we can know the will of the Father. We can discern the way. Without him, we can do nothing. He enables us to discern the way. 
In Matthew chapter number 26, verse number 32, Jesus Christ told his disciples, But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. I will go before you into Galilee. In other words, I will show you the way. I will show you the way. Jesus Christ enables us to discern the way. He enables us to discern the will of the Father. To know the way we should take. He enables us to do the work that God has called us, called us to do. We can do it. Something else that we learn from this portion of scripture. Number three lesson that we can learn from this portion of scripture is that with Jesus' support, with the support of Christ, with the support of Jesus, we are a fruitful, we are a productive. With the support of Jesus, with the aid of Jesus, with the help of Jesus, we become productive. We become fruitful. Our fruitfulness increases when Jesus supports us. Our fruitfulness increases when we respond to his instruction, when we respond to his command, when we respond to his guidance. Jesus Christ told his disciples, if you move your nets over to the other side of the boat, you will find some fish. Move your net to the other side of the boat. You will find some fish. Why? Because Jesus is God. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He knows each and everything that we need. He know what you need. He know the way from the beginning to the very end. He know the traps that could be there. He know the barriers that could be there. And he want to equip you to be able to conquer them, to be able to overcome them, to be able to overcome them with his instructions, with his command. With his command, we are fruitful, we are productive, so what do we learn from that? We must rely on the guidance, on the power, on the influence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell your, tell your neighbor, rely, depend on the power, on the guidance, on the influence of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we rely on the power, on the influence, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we are able to conquer. Number four, important, the fourth important point, the fourth main important point we learn from this portion of scripture is that our awareness of Jesus Christ renews our zeal, passion, and enthusiasm. In the service of the Lord. In our discipleship. Our awareness of Jesus. Renews our zeal. Our passion. Our enthusiasm. Our excitement. In our discipleship. In following Jesus Christ. Look at the response of the. Of, of, of uh, the. Of Peter. In verse number seven. John chapter number 21 verse number 7 the Bible says therefore that disciple who Jesus Christ loved said that to Peter it is the Lord now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord he got his fishers caught unto him for he was naked and 
he cast himself into the sea. Peter was Peter when he became aware when he became aware of the presence of Jesus he responded our awareness of the Lord Jesus Christ revitalizes our zeal it revitalizes our commitment it renews our commitment our commitment our commitment as disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is renewed when we become aware of the presence of Jesus Christ. May the Lord reveal himself to you. May you become aware of his presence. And may that awareness of the presence of Jesus in your life grow and increase. May you grow may you increase in your awareness of the presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Our awareness of Jesus Christ revitalizes us, revives us. Our commitment, our commitment, our zeal, our passion, our enthusiasm, our desire is renewed when we are aware of the presence of Jesus. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. I remind you. These are very vital lessons that we learn from this portion of scripture. Lesson number one. The love of God is constant and consistent even when we fail. Even when we have failed, I remind you, without Jesus, we can do nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. We need his wisdom, we need his direction, we need his power. We are powerless without him. I remind you, when we are aided, when we are helped with the support of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the support of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are productive, we are fruitful, and we become more fruitful, we become more fruitful the more we connect ourselves to the source, to the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The more we connect ourselves to him, we become more fruitful. When we become aware, our awareness of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life, our awareness of the presence of Jesus Christ revives, renews, our commitment, our zeal, our passion, our enthusiasm is renewed when we become more and more aware of the presence of God. May the Lord enable you to conquer all your failures. May the Lord give you the grace to conquer every discouragement. May the Lord give you the grace to conquer every sense of frustration, every sense of weariness, every sense of giving up. May the Lord raise your standard above every failure. May the Lord give you the grace to conquer every failure. May the Lord keep you going. May the Lord enable you to renew your vow, your pledge, your commitment to the calling, to your calling as a disciple, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May the Lord enable you to renew your commitment. May the Lord enable you to renew your zeal, to renew your enthusiasm, to renew your desire to follow him daily and serve him 
daily. May the Lord release his grace upon you. May the Lord release his grace upon you. The grace to cover, to cover every spirit of weariness, every spirit of discouragement, every spirit of giving up. Father, I pray today, stretch your hand of grace upon these of your people. I have shared your word with them as you have enabled me. Father, give them the grace to rise above every challenge. Father, stretch your hand upon each one of them who is sick. May the grace of healing be their portion. Release your healing upon them. Those who are representing their, their relatives, some are representing their friends who are sick. Stretch your hand of grace upon them. Show them your grace. Show them your mercies. Now and forever. Father, I pray. Pay your people a visitation. Show them your grace in their businesses. May they experience your presence. May they experience the grace of establishment, the grace of increase in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen, 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 amen. You are with us, you are not given your life to Jesus, you try to accept Jesus as your Savior. Lift up your hand wherever you are. You want to give your life to Jesus? You want to accept Jesus as your Savior? We would like to pray for you. Is there anyone? May the Lord be with you. May the Lord continually give you the grace. We want to pray with the people who, who have, who are experiencing a, a, a time of challenge, particularly because of loss of their beloved ones. We want to really thank God because of the way you people, you have continually con, continued to stand with our, our brethren, particularly when they are going through challenges of life. Uh, on Friday, we, we were st studying with uh, Robert Gitao and, uh, and Esther. As they were burying the, the mother, the mother to Esther. And I thank God that we were there with a number of you. And we were able to console with them. This time, we have the family of Nicholas. And Caroline, we want to start with them. And because they are in the house, I would like to kindly request them to come to the front because I want to pray for them. I want to pray that the Lord may continue to grace them during this time. They are mourning because of the loss of their father. A father they truly loved. A father they cherished. We want to pray that the grace of God shall be upon them. May the Lord grant you the grace during this time of mourning. We start with you in prayers. We cannot exactly feel the way you are feeling. Because that, pain, that is a pain that cannot be shared. But as you go through it, we remind you that Jesus Christ is standing with you. And may the Lord minister his grace to you during this very difficult time. We also remember our brother Duarte is mourning, a, uh, you are, they are mourning the, the death of his sister-in-law, his sister -in -law, a, a wife of, to one of his brothers. We pray that the grace of God shall be with them. Let's lift up our hands to us, these ones, as we pray for them. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. That time when Lazarus died, Jesus Christ, you visited that home to console with them. 
and you stood with them and you comforted them. Jesus, you are always there beside us, even with, within us, to comfort us. We pray for this family. Nicholas Otieno, Caroline Atieno, and their children. They are mourning this particular time because of the demise of their father, a father they loved. Father, we pray that God Almighty reach unto them in the depth of their hearts. Console them, comfort them, grant them your peace and your grace to conquer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Their relatives, their siblings, and their families. We commit them unto thee, Jehovah God, and we pray for the grace of God. The Lord, you may comfort them. Minister your grace to them. Comfort them, our minister, our Father, and our God. Be with them, Jehovah God, even as they plan their burial. Even in those meetings, God, be present with them. Give the men and women who will support them through prayers and as they give their resources to support them. Father, we pray for them. Protect them during this time. And we declare and decree that the devil will not succeed in bringing discouragement upon them. God lays their standard. Reach unto Duarte and others who are mourning because of the demise of Lehab who passed on. Father, stand with that family. Father, I pray for others who this particular time are going through a very difficult time of mourning. Stand with them. Give them the grace. And may your hand of grace and favor comfort your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. Thank you so much. We would like to honor the Lord as we, as we give. We remind you that our children today are going for a little bit. Isn't it, Pastor? Uh, so, uh, please... We, we know that Apostle Elijah and others are going to take care of them, so I release them and, and we are praying for them and we keep praying for them. Amen. We continue reminding you that on the 23rd, the 23rd of uh, this month, we have done mission outreach to the Nadira people, our uh, 23rd to 27th. We are receiving the gifts in kind uh, because we want to take food there, we want to take clothes there. Uh, please kindly uh, see our, our brother, uh, Elder James, and uh, you will be guided as far as that is concerned. The rest of the announcements, you can see them as they, they are laying on the, on the screen, and that will be good. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. I want to pray with those people who have their tithes, those with tithes, those with free, uh, th those with special offerings of thanksgiving, those with the seeds of faith you are planting in the kingdom. Please kindly join me here in front. Those with fast fruits as well. Those of us who are who are free will offerings, let's prepare ourselves. Also, we want to give. Thank you so, so much. Asante Nisana, thank you so much. Let's lift up our hearts before the Maker. Our Father, we give you praise, we give you all glory. 
our dear ones who are standing before us. They have come by faith. And they are giving us an act of obedience to you. I pray for those who are giving their tithes. And I pray that the blessings of tithers be their portion today. Release those blessings in various areas of their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open the flood gates of heaven and shower them with every kind of blessing in the heavenlies. Those who are honoring you with the fasting fruits, those who are honoring you with thanksgiving offerings, those who are honoring you as they plant seeds of faith, I pray, Jehovah God, that you may re receive your blessings. Open the flood gates of heaven and release the laying of blessings upon them as you bless them. It is blessed to give than to receive. May they receive a whole measure of your blessings. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's lift up our hearts before the Father as we prepare to give our free will offerings. Father, freely you have given unto us and freely we give. A portion of what you have given unto us as a free will offering. Let it be acceptable to you as a sweet fragrance and let it bring glory to you and bless your people indeed. May they receive a hundredfold of blessings in the name of the Father of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord be with you. Those who have come for the second service, please kindly join us. Those who are out, please kindly come in, and let us continue worshiping the Lord. <laughs>